Hello and thank you so much for joining us on CBS 8. I'm Heather Myers here at CBS 8. We are working for you and getting to the bottom of some of the problems you've asked about. We are looking for solutions. We begin with San Diego Mayor Tom Gloria, who announced plans for a huge shelter for people experiencing homelessness. The site is in the Middletown area near the San Diego International Airport. The shelter would house up to a thousand people. CBS 8's David Gottfordson dug into the financial details of this plan, which the city council still has to approve. This will give us a base of a thousand beds that we can rely on for decades to come. The nearly 65,000 square foot warehouse at Kettner Boulevard and Vine in Middletown is meant to be a mega solution to a mega homeless problem in the city of San Diego. It will include on-site security, meals, housing navigation and case management. We will be adding showers and restrooms, a commercial kitchen, laundry facilities, dining and recreation areas in order to meet the needs of the residents who will stay here. The property, a former commercial printing operation, has been on the market for several years and was sold to a private investor closing just two days ago for 13 and a quarter million dollars, according to property records. The new owner is listed as an LLC called Kettner Vine Creative House. The city says it will lease the property for a base rent of $1.9 million annually for the next 35 years at least. And the property will need $18 million in improvements paid for by philanthropic, state, and federal funding. This is the concern that San Diegans want prioritized. So even in a difficult budget year, I'm committed to making sure that we can increase our level of services for homelessness because it is that urgent. Um, it does mean that there'll be other things that will have to be uh, not necessarily advanced this year. With the addition of 1,000 new beds in Middletown, the city may abandon its plan for a homeless shelter at the H. Barracks site off North Harbor Drive and instead use that site for a safe parking lot program. H. Barracks will provide space for roughly 200 households to sleep in their vehicles while they work to address the underlying causes of their homelessness. Of course, all of this still has to be approved by the city council. The first of many public hearings is set before the Land Use and Housing Committee on April 18th. In Middletown, David Gottfordson, CBS 8. Now to an issue affecting anyone who drives in the city of San Diego. The city of San Diego says nearly 600 of our streets are failing and it only has enough money to fix 79 of them during the next five years. And as CBS's Anna Laurel reports, neighborhoods in southeast San Diego have the worst street conditions. It's only gotten worse. The patches are not even worth patching and the holes are tremendous. It's like I call it Dodge City. Elvira O'Neill lives off this street in southeast San Diego, a street the city gave a failing grade. Any road that scores 10 or under is a failed road. That means they require total reconstruction. According to the latest street report, the city failed 594 of our streets. Of those 594, the city says there's only funding to fix 79. Our taxes keep going up. I'm not really sure how this is not getting done. I think we all recognize that our streets are the butt of a joke. We reached out to City Council Member Kent Lee. He represents Mira Mesa and parts of Kearney Mesa, neighborhoods with some of the most failed roads in San Diego. He says the problem is a result of decades of not putting enough money towards city streets. There isn't a dedicated funding source that is put aside for it. It means that in years where there are tough budgets, folks have to balance between all of the different priorities we have. And I think most folks often recognize, uh, you know, they don't want to see some uh, other core city services um, get cut. The highest concentration of failed roads are in southeast San Diego, followed by Claremont, Mira Mesa, San Carlos and Del Cerro, and neighborhoods in and around Mission Beach and Mission Bay. We asked the city what streets get priority and how it picks which will get fixed first. The city says it's a best value approach. The city will improve streets that aren't as bad and don't cost as much to stretch its limited budget dollars farthest. But that means the least amount of money is going to fix streets south of the eight. I feel like a lot of money is misappropriated. A lot of money um, is going to their pet causes and we just don't happen to be one of them.
Well, you can see what grade the city of San Diego gave your streets in your neighborhood by going to this story on our website, cbs8.com. From our streets now to street lights, a street light toppled over right onto a car in University City, and the people who live there say this is not the first time something like this has happened. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes is working for you to see how this happened and what the city is doing about it. My car got smashed, and of course I'm like, okay, someone ran into it or <laughs> what, what, what is smashed. And then, you know what, when I saw it on FaceTime, I said, oh, this is, this really, uh, it put a, uh, 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 it gave a whole different spin to my day then. Tariq says this happened on Thursday and now he's waiting on his insurance and the city of San Diego to get it fixed. That could have hit someone. I mean, you would not even think about a pole coming down on you. There wasn't a storm or a lot of rain, but when you look at the post, it's completely rotted, you know, corroded all the way around. As if one street light falling onto a car isn't enough, Tariq says something like this has happened before. I've seen several of these light poles, just the, the smaller ones, those falling, I've seen at least two. That's when we went to work for you and asked the city, why did this light post just fall over last week? A spokesperson says in part, quote, the base cover of the light looks to be in good condition. Underneath, the cover showed base deterioration, likely caused by irrigation runoff, moisture, and potentially dog urine, which has been known to accelerate the deterioration. The city also says they inspect streetlights and recently made repairs in the La Jolla UTC area in January of 2023. We read the full statement to Tariq, who had this to say. Yeah, they're doing a great job, as you can see. These people are paid to do this job. And, you know, we live here, we pay taxes. So you know, all we ask is just make sure it's done the right way. Tariq and his neighbors we talked to say this has to be fixed soon or it's going to happen again. That's and that, that's the whole reason why we're here. So Tariq tells us he is filing a claim with the city's risk management department to get the city to fix his car. City officials tell CBS 8 that if you have a street light that needs to be checked or addressed, you can submit that work request to them through the city's Get It Done website or app. Now to a consumer alert. When you are looking for a local business, a lot of people go online relying on an internet search engine to help them find the right one. But beware, you may not be contacting the company you intended to. CBS 8's Richard Allen is working for you and spoke with the Better Business Bureau about how to avoid a costly mix up. These days, there's a lot of companies pretending to be Stanley Steamer. You may have seen the commercials on our air for Stanley Steamer and its home and commercial cleaning services. There's a lot of pretenders, but no one else measures up to a Stanley Steamer clean. And those so-called pretenders, companies trying to pass for Stanley Steamer, are becoming more and more prevalent. Almost every day we get calls. Steve Thompson is president of Stanley Steamer San Diego, which has been in our area for 45 years. He says recently companies posing as Stanley Steamer, often with similar sounding names and logos, have managed to trick unassuming customers into thinking they're the actual Stanley Steamer, especially when those customers are searching online. What pops up the most is a, a, we, a website called Stainless Steamer. Thompson says the customers calling the other company are are told that they either are Stanley Steamer or that they do subcontract work for them, even though Stanley Steamer never uses subcontractors. Several online reviews tell a similar story, with workers showing up who are clearly not from Stanley Steamer. The stories have been horrendous of some, some of the uh, aggressive behaviors of the people that have come to the homes, and it seems like a lot of them are elderly. When I reached out to Stainless Steamer for comment, they told us that they never misrepresent themselves, adding that they've been in business for more than 20 years. They also have a small disclaimer at the bottom of their website that they're not associated with Stanley Steamer, but are instead an independent company offering similar services. Most imposter scams do follow the same kind of uh, rubric. Working for you, I contacted the Better Business Bureau and spoke with Corey Snyder. I asked him what consumers need to consider before hiring anyone. No one should ever feel bad about being hypervigilant, especially like in today's day and age. This includes double checking the link you click on to find a company online to verify they're not trying to pass as another company. They're all impersonating 
most of the time legitimate businesses you know well-known businesses ask for an upfront estimate and try to verify any phone numbers the company you're dealing with is calling from also don't be afraid to ask questions and be sure to report anything you think is suspicious being hyper vigilant being aware it's the number one line of defense you can have as a consumer to protect yourself and to report any company you believe is misrepresenting themselves, the Better Business Bureau has set up a special scam tracker. For more information on that, go to CBS8.com and click on the help button. Still ahead, ADUs are popping up all over San Diego. A new push offers incentives to build affordable homes. But affordable to who? We take a look at the program and the current trend in San Diego. And don't forget, we want to look into issues affecting you and your community. Email us at workingforyou at cbsa.com. ADUs are going up all over the city of San Diego and in many cases putting multiple units on one single family lot, basically small apartment complexes. City leaders pitched it as a way to provide more housing for low and very low income residents, but the numbers show that has not been the case. A check of city record shows developers are choosing not to build units for some of San Diego's poorest residents, despite incentives from the city. CBS State Steve Price is working for you to break it all down. Under the City of San Diego's bonus ADU program, a developer can build more than one ADU on a property as long as every other ADU they build on that lot is set aside for affordable rent. But according to city records, this program isn't exactly working as city leaders had hoped. Six brand new ADUs on a lot in the College East area that used to have just one single family home. This is density plopped down in the middle of a neighborhood. Dana Givett with Neighbors for a Better San Diego says there's not a single unit in this complex or this one being built around the corner that is reserved for people with low or very low incomes. It is not doing what was intended, which was to create affordable housing, truly affordable housing in higher income opportunity zones. Developers have the option to make their affordable ADU units available at three different levels. Very low income, which they can rent for $1,379 a month, low income for $2,205, and moderate income for $2,570. Certainly my goal would be to increase the number of uh, units that were making uh, affordable for low and very low income individuals. Councilman Stephen Whitburn was one of a handful of people at a land use and housing committee meeting in 2022 who raised concerns about ADUs actually being built for low and very low income San Diegans. The city ended up amending its original program to add an incentive for builders, allowing them to raise their rent to market rate after just 10 years instead of 15 years if they agree to price their units at the low or very low level. But it didn't work. There have been exactly zero deeded affordable units for very low and low income households that have been part of the ADU bonus program. An independent housing expert told me he's actually okay with all the units slated for moderate income people because he says that's a huge area of need for singles, especially seniors and young people. But neighbors fear that comes at a cost. They're buying up the starter homes in San Diego, which is particularly unfortunate for people who are not already homeowners, and they're turning San Diego into a city of renters. Working for you in College East, Steve Price, CBS 8. Well, coming up next, we have an update on a years long battle to clean up a hoarder house. Why the nightmare may, they may finally be over for the neighbors. It's not. A judge ordered that professionals must clean up an Ocean View Hills home after neighbors spent years complaining that it's a mess. CBS 8 has been working for you to get answers about this home. Kirsten Holmes has an update from the Hall of Justice. A more than a decade long battle might finally be over for these neighbors who say they have been fighting the smell and the rats that are coming from that house in question. Those neighbors and the woman who lives inside of that house all faced off in front of a judge today and then that judge ruled that the house must be cleaned up. This is absolutely incredible. 
but I can't believe this day has come. Ronnie Taylor says the judge's order has been years in the making. This is the house in question. It's in Ocean View Hills, where a lot of these homes regularly sell for more than a million dollars. According to the city inspector, the woman who lives in this home, Lisa Golden, has piles of trash, rotting food, clothes, boxes, and random items everywhere. Some piles, according to court documents, were as tall as four feet. In court, Golden, who is representing herself, says... Her house doesn't look like June Cleaver. She can't keep up with the housework, so it's a mess. It's a house. It's not a mausoleum. I've been charged with having dirty dishes in my sink. He's going to let that corrupt receiver come right back into my house destroy it, loot it, do whatever he wants with the property. Court documents say in the master bathroom of the home, city officials found a dozen used toilet paper rolls and a pile of what appeared to be crumpled up used toilet paper. City officials also say they smelled rotten food and mold. Golden says it's the city receiver's fault that her house looks like this because they messed it up by leaving windows and doors open so that animals can get inside. Another neighbor, Eddie Mead, says the judge's ruling means that justice will finally be served after more than 10 years of fighting. I've seen that house. I've lived next to that house. I've smelled the dead carcasses of the rats or whatever it is coming out of it. It just blows my mind. You know, and it blows my mind to think that anybody can live in a toxic environment like that and expect everybody else just to accept it. Because I don't accept it. My neighbors don't accept it. Working for you. Kirsten Holmes, CBS 8. Boy, so city officials were last at this house on March 18th, and they noted a list of violations ranging from failure to keep the property free of waste to a rodent infestation. Golden is set to work with a court-ordered receiver to get the property cleaned up. Time now for working for your wallet. California has opened its lottery system for its Dream for All program. You can register right now, and here's what you need to know. This taxpayer-funded assistance program offers first-time home buyers 20% of the down payment on a property or up to $150,000. To qualify, you must be a first-time home buyer and first-generation home buyer. You must also earn less than $185,000 a year in income and have a credit score of 660 or higher. Now, the program ran out of money in just 11 days last year. This year, it's a lottery system instead of first come, first serve, and there's fine print because the money eventually will need to be paid back. San Diego home sales and prices are up. That's according to CoreLogic data, which tracks the housing market. In February, just over 2,100 homes were sold, and that's up from a record low of nearly 1,700 in January. CoreLogic says the median home price right now in the county is at $825,000. That's up 10% in just the last year. Well, that's going to do it for us. Remember, if there is something that you would like us to look into, you can email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. Thanks for joining us right here on CBS 8. We'll see you next time.